Good morning. It's Kathy from Crowder's Mountain. We're back for part two of making our hummingbird. And you remember in the first video we drew our pattern on our grid. We used that, um, you know, the flip chart grid paper. But here is our hummingbird that we're going to make. So we've already got our pattern. So if you if you didn't see part one, go back and look at it first. This will make a lot more sense if you do that. Um, in case you didn't see part one, let me remind you again that if I am not speaking clearly, then just ask me in the comments what I said. Um, I had a lot of bone grafts. Uh, and that kind of thing put in my face. So, it was cow bone. And I think that's so ironic because this MDO wood smells just like a cow pasture. And, okay, let's go ahead and start prepping our board. Now, what I'm using is called Kills 3. That's the only thing I use. It's interior and exterior. Now, if you go into the home stores, there's a lot of different kind of kills. But this one is Kills 3. It's um, a heavy-duty high-hide sealer and stain blocker. So that's what I use. That's the only thing I use. And I really like it. Now... For the back, we'll put the kills on in a minute, but for the back, I put a little bit of a gray in it just to tint the back because um, I like sealing it up too. I'm not painting on it, but I like sealing it up. And with this MDO, with that resin in it, it helps me to have it all sealed up when I start to paint because then I'm not smelling that and taking in that resin. Okay. So, what I do, and you can't even see that bottle. Uh, it's got kills all over it. But what I do is, I put my kills in a squirt bottle. And I just squirt around the edges. And watch it not work, because it's probably all gummed up. But, <laughs> but see, I am just squirt around the edges. Now, I have been thinking about getting me a roller, just a little, like a two or three inch roller, and, and start using it. Uh, I think it, it would work fine. Might uh, make things go a little bit faster, but so far this has worked good. Okay, it's dry now, so I'm trying to debate whether to put a second coat on here or not, but I think it'll be fine. But when you're, when you're painting yours, if you, if you want to put a second coat on there, I don't see why you couldn't. Just make sure they're thin. Don't get too thick, because when you're putting your grid on or painting, the, you know, the paint's going to come up if you get it too thick. So just be careful to put a thin coat on, and if you want another coat, that's fine. I, I see where people put two or three coats on. I only put one, but if you've been putting two and three and that's working for you, keep doing what you do, because it's right. <laughs> There's more than one road that gets to Raleigh, right? Okay, now... Because this is resin, before I start putting this uh, pattern on here, I'm going to flip it over and seal the back of it with the... Let me show you. I'll show you what I do. Alright, here it is. So I've got 
I've got this Kiehl's and I put um, any kind of a gray. I use gray just because it's kind of a neutral color. It goes with everything and I don't um, I don't put anything on the back except my signature. So I'm just going to put a coat of Kiehl's on here, the tinted kind, just so that I can seal this resin up. And I'll be right back. Okay, so all of our kills is dry. And now, you know, here's our pattern. And so all I'm going to do now is draw my pattern on my board. Here. Sorry. And I'm just going to draw my pattern on my board. Now, the way I do it, other people do things differently, but the way I do it, especially if I'm trying to uh, teach somebody else how to draw a barn quilt, I always use a grid where I can. Now, some, some barn quilts you don't need to, some you can't. It just makes more sense to draw it by points, like if you're doing Love's Blossom or something like that. But in this particular case, we need to show you guys how to do it. We need 24 blocks across and uh, vertically and horizontally. We need 24 blocks. So I call it a 24 block grid. I guess you can multiply 24 by 24 and figure out how many exact blocks you have, but I don't know why I would need that. I guess if you were really quilting, you'd have to, because you'd have to cut out so, so many. But anyway, we're doing a barn quilt. Alright, so all I'm doing, I took my yardstick, and I'm just marking, I think you can see this, I'm just marking it every one inch on my board. And another thing about the wood, like I said, whoa, where am I going? Make sure I got that right. Uh, this is MDO, but, and I have used that blonde wood, and it worked fine, but I've heard other people say they use um, some kind of marine grade plywood. And you could do, you could use exterior plywood if you seal it up good, but I'm telling you, it's just not smooth enough for me. I, you put the tape on and it runs under the tape because it's all grooved up, but if you can sand it down real, real smooth, I guess you could use it, but oh, that's a lot of work. A lot of sawdust, but you can do it if you want to. All right, I'm going to finish drawing this grid. Let let me show you one, just in case you've never drawn a barn quilt before. Let me go ahead and finish this. I might think of something else to tell you. Leave me a comment if if you have a question so far, and I can answer it. One question might be if you need. Um, if you want to draw this big, like a 3x3 three three or a 4x4, four four, well, like where I need 24 squares, then you would divide 24 into 36, and you might get something like 1.3. I don't know. I hadn't done the math. But that's how, that's how big a block you would get. You'd still have 24 blocks. They would just be bigger. And 48 inch would be the same way. If you had a, a 4 by 4 you're going to have 48 inches. So you need 24 blocks, so your blocks would be 2 inches wide. Still, and this, and this, uh, this pattern is drawn, this pattern, 
is drawn to that 24 block grid. Now, th this is not my original pattern. I just saw it uh, on Facebook or Pinterest or somewhere like that. And I figured out how to draw it. They may not have used a grid. I don't know. Alright. Now, here we go. We're going to start marking these off. One inch. all the way up through here marking these off can you see that one inch uh -oh. there you go can you you can see that can't you no you can't you go. Now you can. You can see this one inch. So I'm going to go all the way up through there marking it off. I'll wet my board and then I'm going to turn around because I've already got this one blocked off too. Try to get my line straight. seeing this. Alright. See, I'm just going straight across using using the little tick marks that I made. Let's see. You see that? It'll be all the way up. So, when I get through, I will have a bunch of blocks just like that. Okay, let me finish that and then I'll come back. Because that would just be boring for you to watch me do that. Okay, now you see I've got all my blocks drawn on my board. And I know that looks like a lot of blocks. And it is but it is the easiest way to show you how to draw this and since I did it on this grid paper I felt like I needed to do that same thing on the board so you could follow along with me but now since we've already drawn it on the grid paper I'm not gonna show you again how to draw the, the bird just go back to that first video and pick up anything you missed. Uh, so I am going to draw the bird on here and then we're going to come back and I'll show you what color of paints that I have. And we'll get started. I know this is real light. Can you see all those blocks? Oh, and again, let me tell you this in case you... Um, didn't know it <laughs> or hadn't watched any of my other videos I use heat erasable pens and so I can draw my grid with one color I can draw the pattern with another color and so um, they usually come in blue black and red and you can get them on Amazon um, I think the brand name that I found was Ibati or something like that. But there's all kinds of different brand names out there. And I haven't found one better than the other, really. But they're actually fabric marking pens. But they do wonderful. It's a game changer for these boards. You can get um, light lead you can get erasable markers like these. Um, I found these that's colored pencils that are erasable 
But then you got to deal with that eraser trash stuff getting on your board and your paint. And so, I don't know. I just, I really like my heat erasable pens. Here's a, it says eight pieces heat erase, like dress making. There you go. And there's no brand name really on that box but you can see if I can get into it this is what you get so you get eight pins but you get like 50 or 60 of these refills and there's white uh, you know, I never have found a use for the white, but some people might. If you had a really dark board, I guess you could try it. I've tried it on black and it don't show up. But anyway, there's plenty of them, and they're not that bad. It, you know, they're just not that expensive. But I wanted to get, get those out and show you. And I've used the same ones over and over. When I taught classes, I... Um, I had bought a bunch of them so everybody could at least have two different colors. And those refills was wonderful. So anyway, that's what I use. And I just take my little handy dandy heat tool here. And this one is it's a heat gun. It's 300 watts. It don't get really hot like a hair dryer. And I can actually dry my paint with that as long as I hold it up. But if I take this heat gun, and I'll show you later, and I, I just go over these blocks, they go away. Well, if I've got a whole lot of blocks, you know, like if I've got my pattern right in the middle, and I've got all these blocks left over, I don't have to erase that. I just take a wet paper towel, or really a, a wet cloth because the paper towel would sometimes leave residue on your board but like a wet cloth a damp cloth and just wipe over and they disappear I mean they go away you're washing them off so that's that's what it's all about anyway it's an easier way to put the grid on the pattern and actually I have forgotten to erase some of the uh, like when I put my tape down I forget to go back and erase the lines and the paint the paint dissipates it so you you're not going to have that on there it's going to go away just like the water gets rid of it but anyway that's just another little trick and tool that i found and i like it and uh you know you don't have to use one of these you can use the cloth all the time you don't even have to have one of these but i like doing it that way Okay, I'll be back as soon as I get my pattern drawn on here. Okay, I'm back. I've got the grid drawn on and I've got the hummingbird pattern drawn on my board. Now what I did here, because I want a two inch border and that's the way that we did the pattern, I went ahead and put some painter's tape and this is Scotch Painter's Tape. Uh, it's not delicate surface. It's, I'll have to find the name of it. But anyway, um, it's Scotch too, but it's blue. And you'll notice that you can't see through that. And the reason I use that Scotch delicate surface is I can see through that tape. And I can tell if I'm getting it right into the corner or not. Or right next to my line. So that, that's one reason I like it, and it works good for me. But anyway, I'll show you that in a little bit. But here we go. We've got it on our board now. So the my colors, I promised you I'd tell you my colors, and I'll show you all of those first, and then I'll tell you where we're going to put them. But the first one is Intense Teal. And I'm going to lay it this way. And then we have Placid Sea, 
which is this one. And tantalizing teal. And turquoise tint. And nautical. Now that's going to be the little feathers on the bottom. Okay. Then, I want to get a snapshot of that. You know, I, I, I do uh, barn quilt classes sometime, and I did it for quite a while. And I've been painting barn quilts for a while. So I've collected a lot of different colors. So you don't have to have all these colors. You can you can mix up some colors. You can have a dark color and put white in it, and then put a little bit more white in it and get different shades of that same color, or put a little black in it and make it darker. Um, you know, I can't mix colors. I'm not very good at that, but other people are, and you can use one of those uh, color charts and tells you how to mix things too. I never was good at that. <laughs> okay. So, for the bird's body, we're going to put here and here, we're going to put silver bullet. And then we're going to have ultra white for part of his body. And we're going to have cut ruby because this is going to be a, a what do they call it a red throated hummingbird that's what this one's going to be all right and then for the outside of his little body we're going to have part picnic all right, now that's his body. Of course, we probably put black in there for his little eye right here, but did you get it? Because you might just want to take a snapshot of this and go on your merry way and paint to your heart's content. Because <laughs> you may have already figured out how to tape and paint. Okay, then for the wing here, we're going to have a nautical. We're going to have placid sea. And we're going to have part picnic again for the top wing. I'll put that right here. And then we're going to have turquoise tint. Turquoise tint. And we're going to have deep space. Now that's the colors that we're going to put, no, let's see, wait a minute, one more, Lime Passion. We're going to put Lime Passion in there as well. So that's the colors. Of course, if you leave now, you're not going to know where I'm going to put these colors. You're just going to know I'm going to use them. You better not leave. <laughs> Stay with me. Okay. So that's our colors. And for what I call the background, you know, in a barn quilt, you're just painting, you're not layering it. But like if you were looking at a picture, you'd call this the background. We can use whatever color we want to. Um, I've got white on the one that I got on my potting shed. But here is aerial view that's just a really light blue that may look pretty because they fly in the sky or trees but if you put it green you're not going to see your bird so we might just want to use it that light blue we'll decide that later all right so for my tape i want to show you 
my tape. Now, I didn't get this idea on my own. I saw it somewhere. And instead of having the roll in your hand like this, instead of, and I like doing that, I like having my roll in my hand, but this tape is so high and I can't find my half inch tape anymore. Well, this is one inch, like .94. Well, I hadn't been using that because I kind of like, I tried it and I really liked my tape in my hand. But the other day I was cutting my tape in half. Now y'all, if y'all followed my channel before, um, let me show you a piece. Here's my one half inch tape, and you see that it's painted on one side, and I flip it around and use the other side. So I'm actually getting two rolls out of one. And then I run out of this half inch, and I got the one inch. So what I'm doing now. And it works for me, and, and it seems like actually it's working better than flipping it around. So I, I just take this tape, this roll, like that, and then I just take my razor and I cut it down through there. Now, I kind of jiggle it a little bit because if you go too straight, it's kind of hard to tell which one is the outside, and your outside is your straight line. You don't want to use the inside of that tape. So now I've got two. I ordered that on Amazon and it was like $8 a roll. Well, I started not to, but then I thought, wait a minute, I'm going to get double out of it. So actually, in my brain, it's $4 a roll. Now, if you're teaching a class, I doubt you could talk your participants into doing that, but if you're doing it at home, hey, go for it. And you don't have to have a roll of tape like that. You can stick it on the counter or something and, and just pull it out and cut it. I, I do that sometime too if I can't find this. <laughs> but anyway, when you put your tape down, since it's only a, you know, it's a half inch, you have to be careful when you're painting. But if you're painting a two by two, your brush is not going to be that big anyway, so you're going to be fine. So let's tape up where we're going to put our intense teal. Set that over here. So we don't have that many places. So we're going to put the intense teal here. And then I'll take this up and then we'll paint this one one coat. And then I'll uh, I'll cut the camera off and do the other two coats. Put it there, and we're going to put it right in the middle right here. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You can just, you know, like start and just do that part and then do that and then do that. But I like putting all my colors on at one time when I can if it don't overlap something else. And then we're going to put it uh, here. Let me 
cut me another strip. skinny you have to be careful see what I mean if you don't kind of jiggle it around and make it a little bit curly on that opposite side it's just kind of hard for me to find what side I need to be using out of your way all right now here's the thing about the grid lines that I was telling you earlier you take this little heat gun and get you down real close so you can see this I'm sorry, but I want you to see it. I think you can see it now. See, it gets rid of those lines. See that? Now I'm going to take a card. Or if I can find one. Here it is. Since I got this on there and I've, I've got rid of my grid lines, and let me get you back up again so you can see it all. Alright. And what, what I'm going to do now is just press down. They call this burnishing. So what you're doing is just pressing down, especially if you've already painted one spot. That helps you eliminate, helps eliminate it. Don't eliminate it altogether. The bleed through that your tape's going to do. All right, there we go. And see my little handy dandy paint tray. set this under here so I'm gonna set that on there and I set intense teal um, these bottles are Lole Vefe you can just say lolevefe.com they'll pull up and um, it's got all kind of different sizes but this is my favorite it's like a seven ounce some of them if I've got one handy or not. Some of them have the measurements on there in case you are, need to measure for some reason, but I don't really need that. So that's probably way too much. But. So I don't have to paint out of my can. I don't have to pour a lot of paint into a cup. I just pour a little bit into that. It's just according to how big area you've got to paint. All right, now let me find me a brush. I'm really prepared. Okay. So here's the thing about putting this paint on. If you can't see that board through that first coat, you've got too much on it. To just make real, you just want real thin coats. We're going to put three and sometimes four on there, but we just want a little thin coat. And you want to go down your tape, and that's what seals it. See that? Now 
we're going to let that dry and we may put four coats just real real thin coats put three coats and look at it and see what what you think if you don't think it's covered enough put another coat on it and a, another tip is a lot of times dark colors uh, a lot of you probably already know this you can put gray underneath it and that kind of helps cover it too so I'll be back when I get the next when I get when I get my three or four coats on here I'll be right back okay here we are we've got I put four coats on it because after three I could still see a little bit of the whiteboard behind it so I put another coat on it now let me show you how I take my tape off and you can do it the best way that you figured out for yourself but it's always easier to me I let it get good and dry and I, I dry mine between coats with this but that fourth coat if you're not careful and if you hadn't got it on there real thin it can come up on you so I kind of let that dry by itself but I'm just pulling it away away from your paint and if you see that it's starting to come up stop stop right then and you can either put your razor blade right at it and then pull it or cut it with an exacto knife or a little bit to stop that pull and then maybe the rest of them will pull up on you I'm working on another three by three over there so you know it's like you don't have to dry your paint you can go do other things be taping up some other section while it's drying. Well, let me get a hold of it. See, I got slap happy right there and run over. I'll fix that. So, <laughs> see that? Three little things. I can start painting bigger sections, but instead of me like telling you one color and then doing that, and then coming back and telling you another color and doing that, what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish the bird. I'm going to save the background, but I'll finish and then I'll come and tell you for. Uh, where I put what color so that you'll know exactly where I put my colors and in the meantime you can be thinking about um, you know like what colors you like you, you might want to make a yellow and green bird or a red and green whatever color your Herman bird wants to be I kind of like the beachy looking colors just he's supposed to be like a whimsical hummingbird but you may like more realistic colors so you can think about that but I'll be back as soon as I finish everything but the background and the border okay I thought that I would show you where I am now I'm almost through with his little tail and I've got the flowers on there um, and I got to thinking about this. If you hang on to the end, I'm going to write the names of the colors on that pattern that I showed you in the right places so that you can take a snapshot of that. I, I showed you the colors, but it'd be harder to explain where I put them. So I'll try to do that, but then I'm going to give you that, the pattern with the names in the sections too. I think that that will help you a lot more than trying to write it down as I go. You trying to write it down as I go. 
and I wanted to show you too when when I get through with the paint like over here in this little thing when you when I get through with it I'll put it in plastic because I know I'll have touch-ups I always do and I touch up my touch-ups because I'm just messy that's just me okay let's take a break I want to show you something I don't remember if I've shown you this lake before. I think I have. And it was just running over. Now look at it. It's way down. It's down about 30 feet. I don't know if you can see that canoe laying over there, not on the bank. But it is way down. If I could, right here you can really tell, cause it, right there, you see that? That lake comes all the way up to the top of the road when it's full. But we take what the Lord gives us. It's gravity fed. <laughs> so it comes off the mountain and comes down into the lake. So it's got to rain a lot. But it actually ran over for about three or four months last year. So, it'll get full again. As long as we keep the fish alive, we're okay. Okay, here is another shot. We're getting there. My hummingbird has a throat, but no body. Maybe I should do that next. I'll be right back. I want you to jump back on here. I'm getting ready to put the background on here and I'm going to show you guys how to get rid of those grid lines. But I wanted to show you how I'm using this. This is just a little razor. And if you can see, you can see this. I'm just putting this little razor right where my line needs to be and cutting just like that so I'm not digging down into my wood um, or anything else I'm just using this as a way to cut my tape now I press down with my fingers and then I go over I think I've told you guys this before. I go over with my uh, little card and I press it down just so the tape don't, um, paint don't seep underneath the tape. See, I'll go all the way around this. And all the way around that up through there. I've already got this part. I've got that part taped and that part taped. So to do this, uh, the background of our picture, it's probably taking just as much tape as it did to do the whole entire bird. <laughs> Let me get it back down here so you can see the whole picture one more time. Got. He's got a body now, <laughs> so he'll have a beak in just a little bit, and I'll come back, and I'm going to show you how to get rid of these grid marks. While we're waiting for that last coat of white to dry that's ultra white I wanted to show you something that um, now I saw it on one of the 
uh, Facebook groups for barn quilts, and it's just the neatest thing. When you're painting and a little bit of paint seeps through the tape, and it, it'll happen, it'll get off on your board. Uh, I don't know if you can see that little spot right there. Uh, or it could seep under the tape anywhere down, down in here. And, you know, you try to cover it up. But if you're covering it with, it, say it's a really dark color, like maybe this teal, and I'm going to put a, a light gray here, then that's going to be hard to cover. But it's just a little tiny bit, so you don't want to stress over it. Well, look what I found. It's called sanding twigs. And I, some someone else actually was using these. And I saw them and I ordered them. And so it's just like little tiny, little tiny um, emery boards. And there's different um, grades of it, like it. Some of them's really fine and some of them's kind of coarse, but they work really good just getting into that little little tiny bit right there, like if you wanted to take it off without messing your board up or grinding down into it too hard. So anyway, I thought I'd show you them. There's five packs of 20 in a little pack. See it? So, you know, if you're interested in something like that, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, I gave away one pack, and I'm, I'm probably going to give away another pack. Because, um, I mean, you know, it's like they'll last forever. And I don't know, you might can get just one little tiny pack of 20. But this was five packs of 20. And you know when the edges when the edges get uh, worn, I don't want to take that back out. But when the edges gets worn, you can just chop off that, and you got the whole stick left. So it they should last forever, and they really wasn't that expensive either. So anyway, when I find a little tip or trick like that, I want to make sure I share it with you guys. All right, let's get this dry, and I'll be back. Okay got the bird finished and all taped up and you see how I use my little razor here uh, like a paint scraper or uh, you know on the windows that's what that is just got a little razor blade and you could get those handheld ones as well those little bit bigger ones but when I had painting classes you know that they were kind of expensive so I found these and they work fine Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to get rid of those grid lines that I told you about. Now remember, we use the heat erasable pens. Now I can take, let me find my, I can take my heat wand and I can get rid of them. You see them? I can get rid of them like that, and they go away just fine. And that's usually what I, well, you can't hear me over that. Um, that's usually what I do when I'm getting rid of the lines uh, between our little sections here. But for a lot of these lines, there's no problem. I've got a little damp cloth, and I'm just getting rid of them. See that magic? There's no problem. And I, I really like those heat pens. And like I said earlier, I got them on Amazon. So look what we got. We got, they're all gone. And if you're worried about it coming back when it gets cold, it won't do that as long as you've painted over it. But now, if you don't paint over it, they're gonna come back when it gets cold if the, your barn quilt is outside. They won't come back if you've washed them off because they're gone. Look at it. She's ready for a coat of paint. 
and I think we're going to use the silver bullet. It's really a light gray. The other one that I have on my potting shed is white. It's more of a cream white because the body of the bird is ultra white. So this is more on my other one is a cream. But I'm going to use this really, really light gray called silver bullet. That's what I'm using on the background. But I'm going to give that a second to kind of dry. And I'll put that on. And then I'll be back. And we'll... Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put, the, I'll put the background on and the border. And then I'll come back and I'm going to show you, like I said earlier, I'm going to take this pattern... I'm going to take this pattern that we drew out on part one and I'm going to tell you what colors that I have in each section and let you take snapshots of it so you can have that. But again, you can put your own colors on there. You don't have to use the ones that I did. But I just kind of like these colors of turquoise and teal and greens. Okay, I'll be back in just a little bit. I hope y'all having fun. I hope you'll subscribe and hit the like button and comment and tell me below if there's any other kinds of um, barn quilts that you'd like me to paint. Okay, or if you have any questions, I'll be right back. Okay, let's start peeling some tape off. I've got this peeled off down here. You can see the... Uh, oh, I don't want to move the camera. You can see I've got it peeled off down here at the bottom. Now let's just start peeling his wings. And one thing I thought about, I'm not sure I said, was when you're putting your paint on, like down here at the bottom, you've got a lot of colors. So make sure, unless you're using uh, some kind of craft paint that's already labeled, if you mix paint or you've got a lot of colors like I do, then make sure you've got that listed what it is. Because you always have to go back, or at least I do, uh, I'm not a perfect painter, so I have to go back and do my touch-ups. And then, like a friend of mine always says, she has to touch up her touch-ups, and that's what I do. <laughs> and then I leave it sitting for a day and go back and look at it again. But before I seal it, I always... I'm trying to make sure y'all can see this. Before I seal it, uh, seal it, seal it, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, I always leave it sitting at least two days. I'm not sure what the chemist would say, but I always, I just like for it to cure, the paint to cure at least 24 hours, if not longer. But I want to see if y'all saw what I just did. Oh, please don't come up. Okay. I missed a spot right here. I can go back and fix that. I missed a spot with my little eyeball, too. I think on the chart that I've got to show you, I put that black, but since I was planning on doing the border with the elephant gray, which is a dark gray, 
then I, I thought, well, that kind of tied that in together. So I just did that little eye in the elephant gray as well. Okay, y'all. What are you thinking so far? Okay. Let's get it back around here. Are you dizzy yet? Try to get that where you can see it all. Okay. Mike can see that. You can still see that um, I've got the painter's tape, that blue painter's tape around the outside. And I've got touching up to do. And that's all right. I'm used to that. And there's a little gray right here on his belly. So I'll be back when I put the border on and it gets dry, so you'll see the finished quilt. And then I'll show you the paint, where it, the pattern with the paint names on it. I've already got it finished over here. And I'm hoping this video is not gonna be too long. If it is, you're gonna see it in three parts instead of just two. I'll just have to see how much Eddie can, Eddie, Eddie, I can't say it. I can't say that word. I'll just have to fix it and <laughs> see how much fixing I can do, okay? I'll be back in just a little while. Here she is. What do you think? Okay, I'm really thinking this video is way too long already. So, I was thinking about the colors on the pattern. And in, instead of you guys having to go all the way through this one to get to the end to see that pattern if you needed to go back and look at it again. I'm going to put it up in a third video and it'll be part three and you can just go straight to that one when you want to. I just really feel like that would work out better for you guys instead of me making this an hour and a half video and if you wanted to go back and check a color or whatever then that's just too much trouble for you. So here she is. And I've used all kind of colors. But what I want to say is you don't have to use the same colors that I did. You can switch it up. Maybe you want a pink flower or a red one instead of a purple one. Um, maybe you want your bird to be yellow and blue and greens. It's okay. It's your bird. <laughs> it's your hummingbird. You make it your way. And that's what I want to say it to, to remind you to always have fun. Throw the drama out. Do it your way. What works for you. What tape works for you. What sealer works for you. Just have fun with it. That's what this is all about. I love it. I hope y'all do too. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be part three. I'm going to load it the same day, I promise. <laughs> See y'all later. Thanks for coming. Hope you subscribe. <laughs>